Hello, and thank you for buying Henson's Fly Machines Vought F4U Corsair. This kit is made of balsa wood and comes on five sheets of laser cut balsa. In the box, you'll find all the tissue you need for covering, the stickers, the instructions, and links to video instructions. To assemble this aircraft, you will need a sharp blade, scalpel, or Stanley knife, balsa cement or super glue, a 90 degree edge and all of the other parts included in the kit. It's also a good idea to have a small nail file or sandpaper. To begin putting the kit together, first label all of the parts on the sheets of paper using the parts list included in the kit. You can do this in a light pencil or simply remove the parts once you're ready to use them. Once you've begun removing the parts from the sheets, you can start with parts 1A and 1B, which are the fuse large slides. The next part to insert is going to be part 2A, which is the cross member of the fuselage and forms a support for the lower wings. This fits just here into the front of the fuselage, like so, just forward of the cockpit indent. And that should slide into that slot there and then just press very easily into the top. Just check the angle of that with your 90 degree angle. Once you're happy where it's located, just glue along the edge everywhere that the two pieces of wood sit together. With that section dry, you can now do the same with part 1B, making sure that it's the right way up and in the same slot. Put it into location, press it gently into place. Once again, check you're happy with the alignment and glue all the way along that seam. Like so. Part 3A is the next part that needs to be fitted and this slots vertically down into the same tabs just forward of where part 2A is seated and push that down firm, make sure that it's seated nicely and runs parallel. Glue the edges of those in place. Like so. Just put a little bit of pressure on the outside of the fuselage to hold it into its spot. Part 4A begins to build up the rear of the fuselage just behind the cockpit. Now you'll see that this sits a little snug. Now you're going to need to Gently squeeze the sides of the fuselage together in order to fit this into the two tabs. Make sure that it's sitting vertical and that the tabs are seated all the way down into the fuselage. Like so. Now, laying it flat, slowly bend the fuselage together just to make sure that your alignment is correct. Seat it correctly and then glue all along the edges where it fits. Into the wood and hold until dry. Part 5A forms the beginning of the rounded nose of the aircraft. Now this slots over the two shapes in the front and be very delicate with this as the side angles can be quite delicate. Push that over the two tab slots and allow it to seat, just like so. Lay it flat on the surface to make sure it's not bent, and then, with just a little bit of glue, run it along the inside, seat it how you want it, and also a little bit on the outside, just to make sure that that external edge is going to stay strong and fixed. Part 6A begins the rear of the fuselage. Now, part 6A fits into the rear of the tail section, into these two slots here. Now, as it fits in, you're going to have to curve the sides of the fuselage together, gently pressing them together. If there is any resistance, you can just sand away these tabs here, as balsa being a natural material does have variances in it. So I'm just going to take off just a fraction of a millimetre there, just so it's going to slide in a bit easier and on the other side. A little bit of sandpaper would do this, or even if you were to squeeze it with a fingernail, it would be just fine. Part 
Now, I'm going to lay that into those tabs there, push them together, make sure that it's down very into the tabs. Now, as I do this, I'm going to make sure that the tail, both arms of the tail there are aligned straight together. I'm going to squeeze them with the same amount of bend and then glue along that inside edge, making sure that I'm happy with that shape on the fuselage. Once all of that is glued up tight, I'm going to be able to fit part 7A, which is the last part of the rear cockpit section, this part here, which forms just here behind the cockpit at the beginning of the fuselage. Into these two tabs here, just behind that cockpit cutaway, push it down, squeeze up the sides to make sure it's nice and tight, and then just a little touch of glue on each side to hold it in place. Like so. Part 8A is the front of the cockpit and forms the instrument panel. It fits just here in this little slanted cutout. And you can lay that there, angled slightly forward, hold it in place very carefully, and then just with a little touch of glue, glue the edges in, keeping it angled to form the front of the cockpit and the dashboard. Part 9A is the cockpit floor or bottom of the fuselage. Now this slides in from the underneath of the aircraft and then slides back until you feel it go tight. Arrange this at an angle, just downwards, meeting up with the bottom of the aircraft there, like so. Apply a little bit of tension to the sides and then glue it along the edge, holding it in place underneath the aircraft. Also apply a little bit extra on the inside. That's just going to give the fuselage a bit more strength. Parts 10A and 10B are the top of the engine nacelle. Now these four must slide into these tabs here. Slide them all the way down firmly. If need be, just press parts 1A and 1B together. Now these are going to give shape to the stringers you're going to put along the top, which is going to give that rounded snout to the Corsair. Now just gently push these down all the way into the cutout tabs, and then just glue them in place where needed. With the fuselage taking shape, we can start assembling the tail section, which consists of part 11A, the upright sport, 12A, the little tail brace, and 13A, which is the tailplane horizontal. So we begin by inserting part 11A into the lower of the two holes in part 11A. So that's part 12A into the lower part of 11A. Now, it may be necessary to slightly trim away the inside part of 12A, depending on the variable thickness, and it should slide all the way back, like so, in a rear triangular shape. Now, glue that at 90 degrees on the inside. You can check this visually. And then just give it a nice strong layer of glue all the way along, like so. Now, more importantly, when you fit part 13A into 11A, it slides into the top slice here. Now, if there is much resistance pushing it back, just carefully sand or trim away the inside of this slot here. That's just to avoid any breakages or damage. It should slide in just like so, without too much resistance. Now, with that in place, use your 90 degrees to just check that it is sitting at 90 degrees to the vertical and horizontal like so, and then glue the whole way along that seam. Make sure that it's a really nice, strong joint that you're getting in there. It's also going to give you a lot more support to the entire tail section there. there Allow that to dry, set in place. With the tail section assembled, it's now time to fit it into the fuselage. Now this can be quite delicate as you need to carefully align 
the two arms of the tail section. Begin by dropping the complete tail assembly into the two arms and then sliding it slowly backwards until you can curve those two elements together at about there. You'll see now how part 12a sits parallel to the fuselage and you can just tap that together like so. That should sit quite nicely like that. Make sure that the tail plane is flush up against the tail of the fuselage and then glue all the way along where the tail horizontal and the fuselage meet and also here where the two arms of the tail touch the fuselage. Just carefully bending them together keeping that center point in the middle and keep comparing how it's sitting until you're happy with it. Fuse large together, parts 14 A and B form the underside of the nacelle and slot into these tabs here. They're the same, so it doesn't matter which tabs you slot them into, just make sure that you've got them in and pushed down. Now they are quite delicate, so just be careful when you're pressing them in. Keep the balsa wood fully supported, get a nice, easy fit. Equal on both sides, and then just drop those down. And as you see there, it's slightly inside of that tab and slightly outside of that tab. So what I'm going to do is just using any kind of poking device, just slowly slide that in there so that it's balanced on both sides. Once you're happy with it, just glue the end tabs. To begin assembling the nose section, the nacelle or cowling of the aircraft, we're going to use parts 17 through 19, 20, 21. Starting with parts 17, A and B, you'll notice that these parts jigsaw together and self-align quite easily. So allow those to sit together on a flat surface, make sure that they're butted up smoothly, and then just gently glue into the joints there, making sure that you don't accidentally glue it to the table. Do the same thing with parts 18, A and B. Allow them to self-level, put them together, and then just gently glue into that seam. Carrying on, do the same here with these parts, which as you can see, have a square cut out. It will automatically rejig, but with a slight amount of play. So you can always use the outside of the circle as a guide. Seating. Just dab enough glue in there to hold that in place. Then 20A and B are going to be your first central support bay. Press together like so. Also auto jig, make sure that they're flat. Glue all the way along that seam line. Nice strong bond in there. And then make sure that that's seating right. Now, starting with part 17, you're going to want to lay that in front of you and then align the center cutout onto the next part. So you'll see there how that center cutout will align with that top section there. You always turn them over and check because you'll want the outside and the inside to align. So once you're happy with how that's sitting there, do just around that inside edge. Just like so. Let that dry thoroughly. Again, with your next part, you're going to align to that center rectangle, which is not quite a square. So it will help you to know which side is up. Again, gluing all the way around the inside. Squeeze it together to make sure you're getting a nice flat shape. 
and then get a firm bond the whole way around. The reason you're gluing the inside of this rather than the outside is once the model is together, um, we're going to sand away the sides of the cowling to get that nice rounded shape to it. So any glue there will interfere with your sanding process, so let's keep that bolster clear and dry, and just glue on your internal. There we go. The last part there that's going on the top is part 20 A and B which is joined together here. Now this one you align by putting it on top and then turning it until you feel a very smooth nice fit. Now laying that on the table you can glue the inside of these holes here into the part behind. Now go quite liberal on there, allow that to soak in and then turn the assembly over and glue the whole way along that inner rectangle really bond it down just as you want it there. That alignment should sit like so, so that when you are sanding you'll get a much better edge shape to it. Now part 21A is going to be the part where your propeller actually passes through. Now this is slightly smaller, so you're going to want to align that to this very slight oval shape and just press around the edges until you get a nice curvature to it. You want about about a millimetre and a half the whole way around. Now holding it in place, turn it around and glue it solidly as possible through the holes in part 20 A and B. You see that little bond there and you can also see the rectangle here which will give you a bit of space for when you're filling your propeller. Now the final part of the nacelle is the smaller ring here which is 22A. Now this needs to be aligned fairly carefully. Turn it around until the oval is in the right place. Just balance it all the way around. You want it fairly central and then glue it around the inside of that ring only. Now if you're painting this you want to get as minimum glue as possible onto there so that you get a nice finish when you've eventually sanded it down. Now you'll see from the sides here that you can completely sand away this shape into a really round nacelle for the aircraft and you'll get quite a good curved shape to it. Now that entire assembly is going to fit onto the front of the aircraft on part 5A. Now you'll see here why that bond was quite so important at the beginning. So get it in place and then just turn it until you feel you've got it well aligned like so the other way is use the guide on the inside there to get a rough idea of where it should sit you'll see that internal rectangle is cut out on there as well now once you've got a good idea of where it's going to sit a little bit of glue on these inside edges like so align it and then just turn it and position it exactly where you want it to sit. Squeeze it down tight so that it glues on nicely. Hold that until thoroughly dry and then again run a little bit of glue along that inside rectangle edge. If this aircraft is going to be rubber powered then this inside rectangle having a coat of glue over it was beneficial, it'll give it a more slidey surface when the rubber comes into contact with it. It'll also make it stronger if you're fitting an electric motor into it. The first string as we're going to fit into the fuselage is going to be the top of the rear fuselage here. Now we're going to lay that the just in here like so. The, the stringers on the actual sheets are not numbered and the reason for this is you're going to want to use whichever one you think is appropriate. Test fit them first. As you can see, this one fits down into the slots on the very top of all of the fuselage parts running through um, 4A, 7A and 5A, or sorry, 6A. And that will sit in those tabs there, running forward, giving a very distinct shape to the rear of the fuselage. Once that's in place and dry, you want to lay your blade flat against there and just pair that off very carefully. Now your next stringer is going underneath the fuselage to give the curvature of the fuselage that shape. Now we're going to lay that in, running here, going forward like so, 
you'll see the little notch just forward of the tail wheel there. And I'm going to drop into there with just a touch of glue, like so, making sure it's centralized. Then sitting it into this tab here. Now for a very nice covering job you want to keep it as high as possible in the tab. Just tack it in place. Moving on the fuselage you'll see how the entire string it will bend down towards the nose here. You can just push it down into that tab there and glue like so and then just push it down here. The go wing shape of this aircraft allows you to have a nice curvature to the bottom of the fuselage itself. So we're going to exploit that here and just slightly bend that forward before we glue it in place. The on the nose stringers are going to come back and meet it there and that shape will form underneath the wings like so. Now the smallest stringers included in the kit are for the nose section and you can start by putting the first one slotted into the top center point of part 5A which is the front and then run it back through all of the tabs dropping it carefully into place like so. Just a little bit of pressure to push it in as you see it will go all the way back to just pass over the top of the instrument cluster part 8A. Now if there is any resistance to put this in it's easier to trim away the formers than to cut the stringers just because they're a little bit more delicate. Push them in with the flat of a nail, be very careful of the formers and strengthen them and then Glue them down, starting from the front, moving backwards. Don't worry if these are slightly raised above the profile of the aircraft because you're going to want to do a slight amount of sanding to it anyway to get it to curb nicely when you've actually covered it. And then move on to the next part along there. Again, starting from the front, glue it down into place, move along the stringer everywhere it passes through. And here you'll see where it meets part 8A, the instrument cluster. We're going to just carefully trim it away, just so it just meets that instrument cluster. It sits in nicely and it will form a whole nose section there. Glue along. And you can also glue to the instrument panel if you've managed to get it to touch. Same on the other side, starting from the front. Moving backwards, a nice fitted shape all the way along. Glue from the front first so that you get that starting point done. And again, very carefully pair away at the instrument panel. Glue it down all the way along. Now, with that in place, you can use the instrument panel to cut away that center part there. Now, this needs a very sharp blade or to gently saw on it just to part that very thin bolster stringer. There you are, that gives that really nice rounded nose to it. The last strings to fit in are some of the longer strings in the kit. Now, these are going to go onto the tail section. These are slightly more complicated to fit in as there is a convex curve to it. So lay this with the tail end fitting against the tail here into the side tabs on the tail. And you're going to want to slot one half into there and one half into the rear. So that's 7A and 6A. And then just gently press down until it fits into part 4A. You'll see the curvature now created. Now do it into part for a hold that in place now you see how it's guided through all of those by the pressure you're putting on it to hold it in 4a you can do it then forward to part 7a and then moving back along the fuselage just press in the stringer so that it touches the tail section here 
glue it to the tail and then the last cross section of the fuselage. Now that's going to give it a very distinctive shape once it's all dried in properly. I'm going to do that again on the other side, making sure that the stringer reaches the same point against the tail here. And hooking it into that front there, hooking it into the last part here, and pressing it down to meet into 4A. A little bit of pressure on there, seated nicely, compare it to the other side, glue it to part 4A, then forward to the front, hold it in place to dry properly, touch the tail section there, a little spring out there, that's one of the important reasons for making it dry fully, and then tension that tail section in there, glue the tail spot there, and then into that last stringer. With the stringers glued in place, we can now use our sharp blade to just gently slice this off in front of part 7A, the rear of the cockpit. Just allow the pressure to rest against 7A, take the strain, make sure they're sitting very flush in there to the inside of your cockpit. Like so. Parts 23A and 23B are the side formers for the fuselage. Now these are the very long shapes here. They're going to create the curves on the side of the fuselage. 23A and B are the longer ones and they're going to fit into this little tap slot here on the side. You'll see how the cutouts should fit exactly into the wood as you go along. Aim for that centre tap there. Just make sure that the wood is properly trimmed and it's going to fit in. Support your fuselage sides as you press them in and just make sure that you're getting a nice little connection the whole way along. Start gluing from the front, anywhere that it meets the wood. Glue it in nice and firm. Now apply pressure along the actual shape, holding it in place, curving it slightly upwards on the tail. You'll see there how it is slightly loose, so press it together, curve it upwards slightly to get a nice shape, and then through the whole way along, making sure that every place where it can touch, it does touch and it's properly folded in and smoothed off. Once that's dry, we're going to do the same on the other side and then fit the other formers, which are going to make a very round shape for the aircraft. Again, aim for that central part, slide it in, get it nice and central, start gluing from that front section moving backwards, keeping it nice and tight. And slowly just put a little bit of pressure on that, curve it backwards and upwards slightly with the shape of the fuselage and then glue it in place. Like so, hold it until you're absolutely sure it's dry. Then we can move on to parts 24, A, B, C, and D, which are all the same. These are these cutouts here. Now, the first one of these is going to go into the top of these rectangular cutouts, and they fit exactly the same way. Just towards the top here, just press them in, flush up with the top of the rectangular cutout. Now, you can use the side of a blade or anything flat just to push them up square. Press them down in, hold them in place, and then just a little bit of glue all the way along. Nice strong bond. Now, the same thing with the lower part of the fuselage. You're going to want to press that in. Exactly the same way, these are all going to get slightly sanded as you shape the final edge of the model. <clears throat> Press it in like so, make sure that it's firm all the way along, and then just glue all along that connecting edge. Just 
fuselage, like so. Then you repeat exactly the same thing on the other side of the fuselage. With all of the side stringers in place, we can now fit the long stringers underneath the fuselage, which run all the way from the nose to the tail section. Now we're going to start at the nose of the aircraft, slotting into that tab just there, and then applying a little bit of pressure further back. I'm going to glue that stringer just at the very front end there, holding that down in place. Now where you apply pressure here is going to depend on where it actually sits, so make sure that the contour you're following and how you actually want the stringer to sit into the fuselage. And then glue it everywhere and it meets the cross sections. It goes all the way down the fuselage to the back. Now hold it as far back as you can in order to get that shape. You'll see there how it sits in this cross section part, which is part 4A and then further back, and all the way to the tail section here. You'll notice that the stringer itself is going to touch up against the tail here to help provide a rounded end to it. And that all glued in place. You can fit exactly the same part on the other side in the same way. Make sure that you've got the full length stringers. And we'll glue from the front again. holding it all the way along, seated as well as possible. Make sure that it is firmly glued before you move on. These strings can be quite delicate, so be very careful when applying pressure. And two all of the little tab slots along the fuselage, all the way to the tail, and then just Yeah. Now you see a very nice rounded shape to the bottom of the fuselage, it gives the Corsair that distinct barrel look. Then on the other side we can start on the wings themselves now. The wings of the Corsair are divided into several parts. The first parts are 25A and B, which are going to attach the fuselage, giving it that gull wing shape. Now you'll notice on each of the parts there is an arrow, these show a forward direction. You also see these rectangular cutouts here, which will show the outer section. And they're going to fit on the wings like that, just so. Now, the parts that fit into these are the wing ribs with three holes in them here. You'll see there's two oblong holes and one round hole. Now they press down into the slots, just here, 25A and B, press them down firmly inside and outside of the shape. As you see there, I'll flatten out any irregularities in the bolts so you can glue all the way along. Make sure you get a nice firm fix the whole way along where the wing ribs sit. Now that is going to sit just like so. You'll feel it there butt up against the bottom and you'll see the, the little nick in the bottom there which is going to help you guide where that sits and it sits just like so resting up against these two supports which project from part 3a and 4a and you can glue that all the way along the side of the fuselage it's going to act as a guide part 4a and 3a making sure that you're at the right angle there which is a slightly downward facing angle you know that going now put plenty of glue onto here as you want a nice solid fixed finish. You can even turn it over and also glue from underneath where you can see that the wing touches the side of the fuselage. Just give it as much strength as possible in there. 
and just hold it until it is totally dry. Now we're going to repeat exactly the same process on the wing for the other side. So we're going to make sure that we have the rectangles facing outwards, the arrow facing forward. Now this is important because you don't want to be building two left wings for the aircraft or it will all go horribly wrong and end up stripping it apart and it probably won't go together right afterwards. So again, three hold ribs. They pop into the slots just there. Make sure that they're aligned forward. Pop them in again. And then, once they're upright, glue the whole way along. Yeah, like so. I just try to fit that underneath into place should fit up flush like so. Compare that against the other wing, hold it in place, I'm going to glue the whole way along. Just making sure that both wings are parallel to each other so that you get a nice fit and there's no twist. Again, feel free to be very liberal with the glue here. You're going to want a really nice, strong joint all the way along. I just use a little bit of finger pressure to make sure that everything's touched up smooth. Don't want any gaps in the seal from fuselage to wing. There you are. And that is both wing stubs fitted and now we'll start building the wing sections. With the wing stubs attached we're going to start building up the wings which are parts 26A and 27A. Now these jigsaw together very simply like so and we'll press up against each other. Make sure you're on a flat surface. It's going to help guide the balsa wood together and get rid of any warping or confusion. Now when these are jigsawed together, you're just going to want to run a little bit of glue along that edge just to cement that together. Press the trailing edge and leading edge of the wing together and allow that little jigsaw to do its job and hold it together. Ensure you're not gluing it to the work surface. Now, you're going to need the same wing ribs, which are the three hold ones again. Start from the inside of the wing and just place that using a similar kind of alignment, pushing it either forward or backwards. Drop it in there, it should be a snug fit, and glue it the whole way along. That edge, a nice solid fit. Now another one of the same wing ribs, moving slightly further down the wing. Just press that in. This is going to be the last hole that will actually fit the three hole wing ribs, so it will help guide you that the other ones just won't fit in the same space. Moving on, there are the two hole wing ribs, which are these two oblong holes. Now the other type that we're going to have are the very outer wing tips which have got two round holes in them like so and there's only two of these with the kit so we can put those in first at the very outer wing tip we just press that into that slot there make sure it's aligned nicely glue all the way along the edge nice firm joint and then you can move in with the two oblong holes drop those into the remaining slots and just make sure that they're aligned forward towards the front edge of the wing, the leading edge, and then drop the hole into place, glue them just on the front edge. Like so, and then again on the back edge. Now you'll notice that in the kit the ailerons and flaps are separate. These can then be put in very simply. Um, the reason they're separate is so that if you wanted to hinge them and make them working, you can do so using a little bit of thread through the thread holes here. Then you can hook those up to whichever micro servos you've chosen to use. Sliding that into position there, you're then going to want to glue it very easily just to the trailing edges of the wing ribs. Like so. All the way along. 
and just a little bit of glue along that joint uh, making sure that it's up snug that'll give you a little bit of extra strength into the kit when you're flying it there you are, that gives you the basic wing shape don't get ahead of yourself and try and put the main wing spire in at this stage quite yet we're going to fit it to the aircraft first now with your first wing built you're going to want to build your second wing now the important part of this is to make sure that you're building a mirror image of the wing so lay out your parts like so so that you can tell that you've got the leading edges and the trailing edges and they're going to form the port and starboard wing of the aircraft so that you don't have any confusion. Now build this in exactly the same way as you did previously. With both wings assembled you'll see how they fit into the wing stub like so. Now these rectangular shapes will allow you to guide them to fit exactly where they need to be however the angle itself needs to be dictated. That is what these small strangely shaped pieces for here and here little L and little diagonal shape here there are parts 28 A and B and 29 A and B now these fit onto the wing like so one just in front of the cutout for the wing spar now glue that one all the way along quite solidly like so where it sits there and the next one further back, just to that end there, behind the second oblong hole. Now these are going to allow the wing to sit at the correct angle, just like so. Now as you slot that into there, what they'll do is they're going to guide that in and just allow it to seat. Now, if you're making this for static display, one of the party tricks of the Corsair was to sit on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier with its wings folded. Now, at this stage, you could, of course, convert the aircraft to sit there with the wings folded over the top on its landing gear and look really good on a shelf. Now, to do that, you would negate putting in the string is you glue that directly into there at the right angle and then you would just very carefully shave away any excess material there and allow that to sit like so at an angle that you thought was appropriate. Gluing the wing to the wing stub should be done quite carefully, laying it down and then bending it upwards until the angled parts of parts 28A or B and 29 A and B sit flush against the wing stub there. Now the first point is to glue those directly to that wing stub creating a nice little preformer. Wait for those to dry properly. This may take a little bit of time as it is quite a small area to glue to. Once you're happy with it though you can glue all the way along that seam where the outer wing and the inner wing meet, you're going to want a nice strong seam in there. You can also reinforce by putting a little strip of paper on the inside as well. That would help build a very strong seal on there. And you'll see that how they fit together. Just press them up, make sure that you're getting a nice seal. A bit of glue on the front. All the way along. You can turn it over and just drop some glue on that inside edge. Now with all that done and in place, while you're finishing the actual kit itself, you want to sand away these little stubs that are exposed. You can make that into a nice curved section there. Now, fitting the other wing is done in exactly the same way. You want to fit this section here, 28A, just forward on where the wing spar is going to sit, glue it in place. Now that's set, and then just behind that second hole there, your rear angle. Now 
that sorted in your place, press down until you get that. Seat it where you want it. I'll put a little bit of support on the there just because it's touching onto the actual work surface. And then you should end up with exactly the same dihedral on both sides of the aircraft. Just make sure that you stick to the little balls of guides that are going to lure it into place. Now one way you can add strength to this, as I said before, is to cut out little papers and glue them in there. You could also bind around the wing leading edge there, just to give it more and more strength built into it. Uh, it depends how much flying you're doing, what power plant you're putting in it. If you're going with rubber power, probably a little bit of paper would help. It's not absolutely necessary. Now we'll glue along that inside edge. A nice solid base to it. You can see it's really starting to look like a Corsair now with that very distinctive gull wing shape. You can see those on there. Now with the wings attached you're going to want to put in the main wing spars. Now there's four of these because of the gull wing design. So what you're going to want to do is just measure off with one of them into the top of the wing ribs there. Mark almost into the wing rib on the next section and then just crack it off so that you've got that length there. It's going to drop very simply into the top that section there. Now position it to the top of the wing ribs and then butting up to the side of the fuselage and glue it in place quite simply like so. You can also glue it along the top of that wing support section there. Glue it against the top of the wing rib and also here at the base where it meets the up moving wing. Now with another separate wing spar you'll discard this for now. Lay that into the top part of the wing facing downwards and then just push that wing spar further back. You'll see here it's going to butt up against that section there. Now you should be able to just carefully slide that past that wing rib, sorry, that wing spar and then just press it down into there like so. Now that closes up very nicely and it's going to add you a very nice strong little joint in there. So just glue that in place all the way along the top, touch it down, like so. Now you see you've got one almost continuous wing spar there glued to itself and to the wing surface. Once that's glued off in place, just take your blade, slice off that edge when it protrudes there, And these little parts here that are on the sheet and not numbered fit just here on the wing stubs. You lay that flat, you can see here how you can maneuver them in order to reach the wing tips and the last wing rib. Now glue those into place. These are flexible so you can put them pretty much wherever you want just to give you that nice wing tip coverage there. So I'm going to put that there and there. It's going to triangulate the wing tip give it a bit more strength and also a lot more shape when it's being covered as well. Like so. Now make sure that once you've got these on one wing, in one way you do the same on the other wing. I'll fit the spars now. Right, with the wing tips in place it's time to add the final few details of the aircraft which are the flaps which are going to fit on here. Now, if you're going to make this RC, you can fit these with little paper hinges, but as this is going to be a static display model, I'm going to glue it in place simply by making sure that it is up flush. And then just finding a little bit of glue 
along that seam there. Now, one of the ways to fit this as detailed in the instructions would be to create a paper hinge on there, in which case the whole flap will be movable. Um, if you are doing this, it's probably a good idea to reinforce the diamond mesh in here, just to give it a bit more extra strength. Um, people have also left these control surfaces off until after covering. And when they've done their glide tests and such, they've used the control surfaces to modify the behaviour of the aircraft in the air. This is the upright tail rudder. Now this again can be fitted with a little paper hinge, or in this case we're just going to glue it in place, check the fitment, glue it along. Um, you can glue it at an angle if you want. I'm going to glue this one on perfectly straight, just by eye. Slot it in there. Make sure that the balsa wood it's going to is straight. And then just attach it at the bottom of the tail. Like so. And there we have our almost complete Corsair. There are a few more details to go on. This is the front of the cockpit, the little faux windscreen. Um, you can, of course, make your own little canopy out of clear plastic. Um, in this case, I'm not. I'm just going to glue this on. These look absolutely fine painted at black. I'm just going to put that at what I think is the appropriate angle, which is there. I'm also going to run a little bit of glue along the sides of it. This is just to give it a bit more strength because it is quite thin balsa. I'm going to glue it all the way along, get some glue into that grain, give it that extra strength. And there you go. Now the only pieces remaining in the kit are your undercarriage, which are these here. Now the undercarriage in the Corsair is a little more flexible than usually in our kits. Um, these little kidney shaped pieces will press out and they form the base of your landing gear or undercarriage. Now, if you're flying this as a free flight model or even a micro RC model, the style of the Corsair undercarriage is very fragile. So you are going to want to build them out of wire or something similar that's going to take the punishment. Now, as you can see, these little legs fit directly into the kidney shape. A um, little bit of glue holds them in place. Just like so. Now, in most of our kits, there are designated areas for you to fit the landing gear. However, in the Corsair, because of the gull wing shape, you can fit them on this front edge here or adjust them wherever you think is more fitting. If you are going to have it as a static model and have the wings folded up, you need to fit it on that edge, just there, like so. Um, again, if it's a static model, you want to sand that flat and then glue on a little bit of landing gear there. You can attach your wheels on the end and then leave them off for now until covering. There you are. That is the... Vought F4U Corsair, complete, ready to cover. Um, there's space inside for micro linear servos and a small brushless motor. Thank you very much for buying Henson's.